the McDonald Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am here with the official favorite. No one can take his crown. You are a queen, a king. You are everything. <laughs> Chris Frangelo, welcome back to Juicy. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here, but I mean, it's not even what you're saying right now couldn't be more false. Why do you feel that? I way? know that people f- are mad at me for starting every podcast off this way, like but, a negative way. That's yeah, why I do but it. it. Like it's it's it, the the people chomping at my heels are now <laughs> taking over. They've taken over. I've been I've been outed by the gay mafia. The gay mafia has taken over the Juicy Scoop. Who is that? Just Justin? Justin. Well, I mean, Justin Martindale. Well, speaking Brandy of... Brandy and speaking Julie. Speaking of which, Justin is joining me at a winery. Yeah. Only because you're not available. You have your own show. You did on not the, know that up until other... three minutes ago when I told you I'm not available. Right. I I may or may not have ever looked up your dates before asking Justin. <laughs> I will be mm-hmm. um, at the Krug Winery. I believe it's in Napa or right next door to it. Maybe not Napa proper, but it is at through the Charles Krug Summer Sessions. Uh, we have two shows, 639 on Friday, June 17th. Get your tickets, invite your friends, the whole thing. Why don't you say where you'll be that weekend oh i'll you be at said, a winery in massachusetts yeah i don't know exactly the name well of it, but you didn't I'll come find prepared out. good I'll luck find out. No. everything yeah. is at <laughs> tell them your website frangiola.fun frangiola.fun <laughs> has all my dates and i'd like to say i understand all of this and i know there are other people who people like more and that's great nobody likes anybody but i, I want to say thank you for having me on juicy scoop because i it might be coming to an end now with all these with the gay mafia <laughs> now out never, to get me Come to an end, Chris, because, because I just enjoy you as a friend. So even every if everyone city hates I you, play, yes. I just got through with Michigan. I was in Michigan. I played a bowling alley in Michigan. I played a hot dog restaurant. I, this is know, all true. Yes, but you were also opening for Fortune. No, or featuring that, for not Fortune this weekend. Oh, I was not all by this myself. weekend. Oh, you're all by no, yourself. No. Okay, well, I and heard Juicy Scoopers came. All Juicy Scoopers. They're, I mean, they're, the, every show is packed. I mean, the place seats 27 people, but it good. was packed with Juicy Scoopers. Did you get to play, did you get to bowl after? Because I'm actually kind of a good bowler. <laughs> well, the funny thing was, once the show was over, the bowling alley was closed. And it was an old school, like 1950s bowling alley. It wasn't one of the cute, fun, light ones. It was like a real bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you were bowling slash doing comedy, but so many juicy scoopers. So thank you. You missed um, my be- my boat day. Oh, I now, didn't miss it. I watched it on Instagram. Okay, well, you could have watched an amazing dance. My friend Liz was there. Uh huh. I this is just a photo of me about to do my whole dance, which I did an entire dance like splits, rolling around, exhausted. At the end, she realized she had never pressed video. Oh no. <laughs> then I was too tired. But, um, oh, I got oh, look this at that beautiful picture. necklace. Look at my Juicy Scoop necklace. I, s- I noticed that Font when I Font and everything. In. Ashley Mitz. This is through uh, Ashley, and this and their Instagram is the Malks, the, and then M-A-L-C-S. It's by appointment only. She and her husband are jewelry brokers, designers, the whole thing. And she made me a diamond and gold Juicy scoop with like the exact font, yeah, and everything. Amazing. Great. So follow them on Instagram and see their amazing stuff. Okay, so she came and gave that gave that to me. Justin was there on the boat. You could have come. No, the reason. Yes, I would have invited you. I've already Listen, invited you twice. You have invited me twice. I know. I understand that. You would have been invited if I knew you weren't out of town. Can I tell you the? Re- do you want the reality? What's the reality? You invited me twice and I was able, well, not able to make it. And okay. you did tell me, you said you have one more reject okay. in you. And, right. then, and then you're never invited again. You said that is Peter and I, we, we give people three chances. <laughs> we do get very butthurt about I, things. I know. And so the reason we had the boat that particular day, because we have to reserve the boat and stuff, mm-hmm. you know, it's not, we, we don't, it's not to our disposal every day, was because Jeff Lewis. We first had offered to throw Jeff Lewis a birthday party a while ago. Right. He then said, yes, we picked the date. Then he said, I really, that date doesn't really work. Can we do it on a Saturday? We had to find a Saturday. And he's like, I want to host it for the people that are on my radio show all the time. And I was like, great. Okay. Right. Then six days prior, he goes, you know what? I'm so sorry. I can't do 
the boat party. I have to go to New York the next day, and I have my daughter and all this stuff. Okay, fine. Well, the juicy scoopers that enjoy both myself and Jeff Lewis mm-hmm. saw that he was in Fashion Island, a stone's throw away from the boat, Yeah, at his boyfriend's book signing, which is a legit excuse, but still, and then went on to have a long, leisurely lunch with Shannon Bedore and Kelly Dodd. Oh, while we were floating, it hurts. Doesn't while it hurt? We, while we were floating around on the boat, I mean, he missed out. He missed out, but you know what? Yeah. Don't know if the third invite's coming his way either. Okay. Well. So we'll see. Well, I didn't. I reject you on uh, certainly not. I'm not partying at Fashion Island or at bookstores. No. Yeah. <laughs> Never at a bookstore. <laughs> Never. How dare you? No. I saw. Why don't you mention the other people who were there? There were other people. Well, on then the boat. I asked. Brandy and Julie were already planning us coming right. as because they appear on Jeff's show. Uh, my friend Liz and her husband always delights. I invited my friend Krista. And um, who else came? Oh, and then Justin and, and Evan. Yeah. Okay. I'm just – listen. I you, would have, you would have fit right in if you were in town. Listen, because of who you are, I'm going to give you two more chances to reject me. Out of town okay. does not count. I know. So if you're out of town, you have a free pass. If right. it's just like can't swing it, can't get a sitter, and I give you like three to four days prior, then then that tells me you really are not that into going. No, it's not about that. Weeds would love. Because we you love have a your local company. grandmother and you have a, a, yeah, a nanny. Yeah, that's their use. So, useless. like, this is not, you're not some, you know, yeah. single father juggling it, you know, yeah. so stop. <laughs> well, I just want to say that I understand. I believe that it's, I'm, you feel that I'm boring now. I used to be fun and now I'm a father and I have a young child. Your I, children are grown. Brandy and Julie, I believe, don't, I don't know if they have they kids. They don't have kids. Uh, neither does Justin. They don't have so, kids. So, I believe that I'm just a boring old man father, and you're like, he's out. That is not at all the case. And I struggle now coming here to do the podcast. I struggle to come up with things to talk about because I like I don't have anything, and I feel like you're going to be like, this guy brings no juice. He's done in this bit. He's done. No, you're not done because your opinion is what matters. <laughs> okay. But um, I do enjoy my old kids. Let me tell you, anyone struggling with little ones, it gets better. Yeah. It gets – oh, my God. We went to Catalina with them, and I had so much fun, and now they're, like, bonding again. Like, there was a time when I didn't even think they liked each other. Right. Now they're, like – they're bonding. They're, like, yes, we could do this for a week. And they're looking we handsome. Were so, we were so afraid I that our kids didn't want to be on the they're boat. They're looking for, good. Yeah, they're getting strappy. Yeah. They're, st- they're like, getting strappy. I mean, like, they're, like – Can I ask you a question? Up, is there, their is there women for any – have you, has there been, like, I got to – because how old is – Oh, my God. Drake's face lit up as he started to type away right away on his phone. Oh. And I was, like, thinking in my brain. And I go, can you just tell me who you're writing? He goes, Grandma, she just Snapchatted me. <laughs> I go, what the fuck is Grandma <laughs> doing on Snapchat? What is, really? I go, does she ever post? He goes, no, she just lurks and, like, follows me. Oh, okay. I don't even know how to do Snapchat. Yeah, I didn't even think that was so anyway. thing. But all right. So that's um, so it's grandma, but really no, maybe. it sounds like he's having fun though. He like you know, uh, is partaking in some fun and going on like he's like part of this like um, not waterboarding but like waveboarding or something yeah. cl- cl- club. And so like they went on a boat. Oh, and right. grandma said the Snapchat looked pretty wild. Oh, God. She watched the entire day <laughs> of like all the contests and like the belly shots and whatever the hell they were doing. Yeah. So that so, made me feel good. A, oh, little, well. a little bit of debauchery. As long as you're happening. getting positive critiques from grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that says all you need to know about your college life. Yeah. Grandma so we had fun. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. But you see me because you're watching this. But have you subscribed? Have you told a friend? Have you liked it? Have you copied the link and texted it to someone you love or you just feel like being a nice person to? Please do that. It keeps us going. So if you like watching Juicy Scoop here on YouTube, subscribe, like, and share. I saw this and thought of you. It was a TikTok. Okay. This is by, let me make, get the show. This is by, what is that? Ryan Whelan. Okay. On TikTok. Ryan Whelan. And he said, if you think your life is bad, there are Siamese brothers, just one is gay, and they just have one ass. Oh. And it's a is photo of the- Oh, the guy's kissing the well, guy. Well, one has a boyfriend. Oh. But the other one doesn't. Yeah. I remember there were these two Siamese twins. And, Greatest thing ever. And we did one, it on Chelsea lately. Remember one, you played one. 
No, I don't think we ever got together as a Siamese twin person. You and Sarah Colonna. Yes, you did. I have video of it. You and Sarah Colonna played those connected Siamese twins, and I hit on you. I was some college kid hitting on you. Well, I was was always obsessed with them because there was one wanted to be a country singer. (laughs) The other one was a comedian. (laughs) Stand-up comedian. Okay, then then there was another pair where one wanted to do volunteer work, but the other one didn't. (laughs) (laughs) I know. It's always so – I know. That's got to be a tough one. Really tough. Yeah. There were so many shows about Siamese twins back in the day, and now I don't see them anywhere. Well, Little People took over. I think Little People bumped Siamese twins. Little and People now, and, and now, extreme overweight people. And, extreme, and now th- I think Little People are being bumped out by um, just people with dirty houses. A lot of dirty the yeah. dirty houses. I think that's a hot Oh, that's thing. a hot topic. If, you're, if you are a, si- a little Siamese person with a dirty house, you're going to kill it. <laughs> 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 a little person in a dirty house with several little kids and yeah. then you lose one because the, the house is so dirty and the, the person is yeah. so small. That would be – that's Sign a reality I'm show. I'm watching. That's a reality I'm, show. I'll watch that. Um, Andy Cohen had a, a secret baby just that we didn't know that he was expecting. Yeah. So he had his little baby girl and – He's a single father of two. And when I posted it, I wrote, oh, he's a single father of two. Congrats. Now he's a little girl. He has a little boy. And then somebody was like, why are you focusing on that? I'm like, I'm not. Why? That's not being negative. Well, yeah. Like if you can afford it and you're of a certain age and you don't have a life partner, go right. have your own baby by yourself. Yeah. What's because let me tell you, there's some stories coming up about awful child custody issues. That if, you, if, if oh. you, the baby's just yours, you don't have to ask – the ex, can they do soccer? No, they can't. Right. Like, okay. So speaking of people that are not having a great time. No. Amanda Bynes. She's having some problems, right? She had a crazy weekend. So she's engaged I think this every guy. weekend's a crazy weekend. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that in a bad way. Well, she's, I don't know if her, I think her conservatorship is done. Her mom was it for is. ending it. And she has a fiance. And she went on uh, her Instagram or TikTok or whatever and said, um, I need to tell you about my fiance. I just found mother-son porn on his computer. Like real mother and sons having sex. Yeah, but that's not, they're not real. That's the, like the plot line of the, of the porn. Or is it real? Oh, I don't know. Okay, no. well, whatever. Weird. Okay. Um, and then she said uh, – He's been using again and all this stuff, and it's over. And he vandalizes his mother's house, maybe because oh, watching the porn. I don't know. Yeah. He got mad at his mom or something. <laughs> She's not <Right>. putting out. <laughs> I don't know. So then, you know, everyone's very concerned about her. She has the heart tattoo on the face, which is just a huge mistake. That was it. It's in a it's in a so I mean face tattoos are becoming more and more you know, I don't know, accept it, I think, a little bit. Dr. Drew says it's a sign that, that there's something off. Well, you could have every inch of your face tattooed, like, I mean, the hairline, as people yeah. would say, the edges. You could have everything done, okay? The head, right. everything, like a Travis, the neck. But he says when you start really doing, like, on the face, that's a sign. Something, really? Yeah, that something's I, not I can, great. I could agree with that. I mean, I, I've seen people with it on the face, and none of them seem to be upstanding citizens. <laughs> I know Amber Rose, I remember when she got her two kids on her forehead. Oh, she did? Yes. And I was very – because she has such a beautiful face. And I was also like, take it from somebody whose kids are old. I mean, they do not want their names on their mother's face when she comes to pick them up in the eighth grade. (laughs) They do not. It is not a compliment. No. It's the same way that if your kid got mom written across the chest, you're like, well, thanks, but – no, like, I didn't want I don't my want mom. That. I didn't want my mom coming to pick me up. My mom one time when iron ons were hot. Remember, everybody was getting an iron on shirt. Oh in the yeah, 70s? it was called Chicken T Shirt Place that you'd go. Whatever, you uh, pick it out like yeah. almost like a tattoo. You pick it out exactly. And say, I want that on a pink cap sleeve T shirt. That's it. Yeah, but in our in our case, it was called Different Strokes. That was the name of the store where you got it done at the mall. Okay, and my mom got one glittery roses. Said Touch of Class. <gasps> Touch of Class. <laughs> Do you know? Oh, my God. And I didn't want my mom. I didn't want my mom to see. I don't want to be seen with my mom when she was wearing the Touch of Glass. I bought the Touch of Glass t-shirt. Touch of touch Class. Touch of Class t-shirt exactly for my friend Liz's 10th birthday. 
hundred percent touch of class, and I think there was like a rose. A rose, it was a rose. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> so your mom shows up, and she, he's and you're Called like pick us up from whatever. And the touch of and class. And why t-shirt. did that bother you so much? Because I knew even back then, nothing. There was nothing about it that had to, was class. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and not that we were a classy family, you know, Yeah, but things worked out fine. We're all good. But at the time I knew it was a bit of a, but then knowing, knowing now what I knew, if I knew now what I knew then, I mean, the whole neighborhood I grew up in was yeah. a classless dump. <laughs> so. I just remember this one kid was like, oh, I saw your grandpa pick you up from school um, yesterday. And I was like, oh my God, he thinks my dad's my grandpa because both my grandpas died before I was born. Yeah. Well, my dad had me. Um, at like 46, but he also had fully white hair at like 35 on. Yeah. So then he caught up. By the time I was in college, he looked like everybody else's dad. But there was a time where everyone's like, Heather has a grandpa. And um, I just was like, oh, yeah, he's visiting. Then I was like, how do I figure out this lie now? But that was like a little embarrassing. But I, what I was can I see supposed to do about that? I feel like I'm going through that currently with my daughter. <laughs> I feel like people look at me like, oh, grandpa's could here be. to pick up the baby. It could be. It happened. Who cares? I was, I was walking her down the street, and one of the neighbors said, how's that granddaughter? Oh. And now I see the guy a lot, and I think he re- finally realizes. It happened to my sister and her husband, and they're not that old. But yeah. they – it was – I mean, they granted, they were pulling into Red Rock in Vegas after a long <laughs> trip from, like, Sun Valley. Mm-hmm. And the kids were pretty little at the time. <laughs> they pulled up. And the guy's like, oh, fun weekend with the grandkids? Like, the valet said it. Oh. And my sister was like, holy shit, who is your Botox person? Like, get me. I need a facelift. Like, uh, what? How <laughs> could this happen? I think in this day and age, you, that's one of those things with are you pregnant? Like, you can't – I don't think you can say You know say what? It. In, all, in both of those, those occasions, and please, I love my Latina and Latino Juicy Scoopers, but – in another occasion, it was a gardener that said it to my friend. Oh. I think because they look youthful and they have kids young, that a grandma is our age. Oh, totally. So I don't think yeah, it's like – Yeah, no, I agree. But in all those cases, it was a Mexican person saying – Yeah. And, 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 and with the greatest intentions. Really wanting them to have a wonderful weekend with their grandkids. And except in, that it wasn't I mean, grandkids. honestly, they, the Latino and whoever – else, that's when you're supposed to have kids. They, that's right. doing it right. <laughs> You know, all, us old whiteies are – we're idiots. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to have your baby yeah, at 23. at 23. You're yeah. not supposed to have it at 52. <laughs> Weirdos. Anyway, then she goes on. Okay, so then she says her, 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 you know, Instagram live. I don't think I have the thing. Anyway, then the last photo is her holding her his hand with, their, with her engagement ring. Right. And she says – Hi, thanks. Um, I misspoke. He uh, he really wasn't using. And the mother son porn was. He told me that he had, was looking up milfs. Just yeah, because, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a genre of, of porn. Okay, well, so you on her side? So she <laughs> no, said, no, no, okay, I'm just looking, saying. Or his side. He was looking up milf stuff, and the algorithm then sent him a bunch of disgusting mother son fucking right. porn. Yeah, because he looked up milf. Okay. And he actually didn't vandalize his mom's house that much and, like, wanted you guys all to sleep with us alone. We're happy. Yeah, this is another case of uh, this girl obviously has severe mental problems, right? I mean, that's this is almost worse yeah. than, than a Britney Spears. I think she's got some real issues. And, um, I also think people are just so dependent on getting this immediate reaction from, like, the fans. Like, you get in a fight or you start recording your husband yelling at you. It's like, take a breath. Right. Like, like maybe, okay, fine, record it and, like, save it. But, like, do not post it and everything because you might want to stay with this person. Yeah. And it might have been the algorithm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it might have been not full-blown crack. I don't know. But, like, do you not have a girl? She probably doesn't have a girlfriend to call. But, like, call a girlfriend before you yeah. go on Instagram and – have us all worried and I mean <laughs> she should have called a girlfriend before that tattoo I mean there's a she could have made some phone calls yeah before that I haircut. guess Britney Spears is still not posting now after her last fashion show because I just checked she took a break she said she was taking an Instagram break so she said she's taking an Instagram then break posted. then she did the fashion show yeah but the then, one with the long and where she was holding her arm in a strange with the dress holding, yeah, yeah, yeah. The back. Um, and now is she really pregnant or not I mean I I, I mean, look, I was, not. I, I have said, 
I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't think so. And I feel like, and I said it on the last show, and I really thought like the Free Britney people would come after me. Right. And either they're not listening or they kind of agree. Because yeah. I did not hear anything. And I'm saying there's nothing wrong if that's the case, or she right. jumped the gun, or she spoke too soon, or... She, but it's not. It's not a great. It's not a great sign that yeah. someone goes on a huge platform of thirty million people or however many follower, a hundred million, and announce something that important if it was not a hundred percent sure or like past three months. Am I wrong in saying this? Or I don't know if she posted something else after the one that I initially read. But even in the one that I read. It, she never actually said she was pregnant. She said, I'm having a food baby or something. And then it was a weird, I don't know. I, I, oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So she never actually 100% said, I'm pregnant. I think all the news sources picked it up based on that thing. Yeah. And then she never really spoke of it again unless no, I'm wrong. No, she did. Then she, she did one where she's like, uh, I'm, I love, I'm like a fish. And it was like her in a, swimming in a pool under, and say he was like filming underneath water, whoever was. Yeah. And she was like the babe, you know, uh, spoiler alert, babies love water or something. I'm like, that's not a spoiler alert. Whatever she was doing, she's twirling around. And then. But she's never officially said I'm pregnant. Oh, no, that's she a, did. She said, she, did? she said, the videos of me doing fashion shows exposing my stomach were taken before I was pregnant. Oh, okay. So she has said oh, okay. it. okay. So I'm wrong. Then. Yeah. But right. anyway. So who knows? So we'll see. Um, you know, we like to focus on weird um, clothing. Yeah. So um, Annie and I found this, and Annie thinks it's for breastfeeding. I don't. It's like a bandeau bra top, so it'll give you support, but then it has little slits at the nip. So you can see that. And I think you want to pop the nip out. Yeah. And then so that you have a hard nip look, mm-hmm. but with with um, a little bit of a lift. That could underneath. very well be the case. But it's at Walmart. I'm kind of like impressed Walmart's going this route. It says meet the must have you'll be wearing all season. So if you're pregnant, if it's for breastfeeding. Oh, yeah, you're right. You it's wear not, it all so season. it's just hard nips out. Yeah, it's hard nips out. Yeah. All I right. think it's like a Jennifer Aniston hard nip. Like, look. It's a hard nip summer. Yeah. It's a hard nip summer. Everybody it was hot. It Once again, hot in the 70s. That hard nip. Not that my mom had hard nips well, with the touch no. of class shirt. I'm not supposed to say that. The hard nips. Yeah. The hard nips is what made the Farrah Fawcett Farrah poster, F- poster go crazy. Otherwise, it was kind of just a conservative red bathing suit. There was a movie. And she's just sitting there. Do you remember like, Jacqueline Bissett? That actress, yeah. Jacqueline Bissett. There was a movie called The Deep with Jacqueline Bissett. The only reason anyone went to the movie is because she was nipped the entire shirt on, but hard nip for the entire movie. That's all anyone talked about. Do you remember the actress, um, oh God, with Paul Reiser, Helen Hunt? Yes. Not yes. A, not a beautiful face. In the rain. Okay. Yes. She had two rain movies. Jack she Nicholson. Had, she, I believe she got a boob job yeah. halfway through her mm-hmm. sitcom with Paul Reiser. But there was one that was like a disaster weather movie about hail. No, it was uh, uh, tornadoes. Okay. Yeah. That one, it was white tea, hard nip the entire time. <laughs> Did you seriously think the movie was about hail? <laughs> I thought it was about hail. <laughs> no, it was, it was. they were tornado chasers. Okay, anyway. Twister, it was called Twister. <laughs> then she had another one with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yes. Where she was a waitress and he was an old rich man, but he was like, like just a weirdo and he had like um, yeah. OCD or whatever mm-hmm. and she had a sick kid who lived with her mother but she was a waitress and at one moment she's like maybe I am hot for him so she leaves the house in just a white t-shirt yeah, and it happens to be raining and goes running through and takes the subway or whatever and goes running up to it and she at full hard nip yeah I remember it well Good. I, I, I definitely want to tell I want to speak to the kids right now hard nip is an easy way to go well, how, to, to get how, attention. Why? Okay, everyone right now, as we've talked, is doing under boob. Uh, yeah. Jessica Simpson I just did it. one, and it was squishing it, and it's weird, and it's almost like a flap of skin, yeah. and it's like, and then sometimes people are uh, combining it with like a, a squirty fat of <laughs> boob on the side. It's not good. You used to call like a. What you side call cleavage? Side, would, no, vagina. You said it like a vagina. Oh, in or something. your arm. When your yeah. arm, betw- your arm, it, we have a little, just enough fat. It looks like a freshly waxed <laughs> vagina. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah, I know. And it's like literally. Sometimes if I if I really focus on it, I'll like make the vagina talk or whatever <laughs> in my armpit. Uh-huh. <laughs> but wow. it is like, hold on, yeah. I totally have it. Wait, see what I mean? Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just see how I cute. See it. Look, I see it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it really does. Wow. Just closed. Yeah. Not not a hanging out labia. No. no just, nice yeah, and closed. All in there. Much like Black China's vagina <laughs> when um, Rob put it on the internet for 10 minutes. Um, anyway. <laughs> closed uh, lip. Closed, closed lip. lip. Sure. Um, but I think a hard nip is a fun way to go. It is. It's and not it, too much. And it's not like you're trying. Yeah. It's like. This is nature. This is yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and my nips are hard and perky. Right, I love it. Okay, good for you. Um, okay, so let me tell you what's going on with the Black China trial right now. Yeah, I, I know about the, tri- the trial, but I don't know who's who's suing who and why. Really quickly, as uh, Black China is suing the Kardashians for over uh, like almost about one hundred fifty million, uh, mm-hmm. sixty for lost wages for when Black China. When uh, Robin China got canceled, like another forty million that she could have made in endorsements that left her after the show was canceled, right? And then some other fees that add up to like fifty million. Okay, right. So she <clears throat> says they badmouthed her to E executives and people, and that is why E chose not to do season two. E and everybody else is like the show was called Robin China and Love. You'd actually got actually gotten a restraining order against him before we even right. like had the green light of saying yes or no for season two. And um, it was very problematic. Like, you were problematic. It was, like, not a joy. And it's not, like, our fun. It wasn't what the show was supposed to be, mm-hmm. you know? It yeah, was, like, right, right. what it was supposed to be fun. I mean, speaking of which, Pretty Wild. I remember the show. That Pretty Wild show that was on E! Produced with, by, uh, the, by, Tom, by Chelsea, yeah. Tom, and Brad. And that was... A mom with her three beautiful daughters who she homeschooled them the secret. Yeah. And it was going to be a little bit lightly scripted and like quirky and like the next Kardashians. Well, as they're filming, Alexis Haynes gets arrested for doing the bling ring. She was in that bling ring. And they find out they have drug and, and severe drug problems, the girls. And it becomes like this weird dark thing. So even that didn't come back. Yeah. That did not come back a second season. They're like, what can we do now? She's doing time and, you know, they're doing heroin or whatever. So this, so anyway, they go to trial. China speaks for 11 hours testimony. Oh, wow. At the end of it, now the Kardashian's attorney, from what I've heard, I've got a juicy scooper on the ground in the courtroom right now, Stephen Mango. In the, in the courtroom. In the courtroom. He's texting me. I'm like, they're right now deliberating. We're recording this. And this is happening Monday in Los Angeles? At 12. Yes. And what really worked out great for the Kardashians, who obviously had to pay their attorneys to defend them in this lawsuit, okay. was um, they were like, you need to wrap this up because we need to fly and do the Met. They're going to the Met. All the of Met them. Ball. All of them are in New York going to the Met Ball. Is that happening again? I feel like it just happened. It, no, it hasn't happened for like two. I don't. Yeah, you're right. It did just yeah. happen. Yeah. When yeah, was she wearing the black yeah. mask? That, like, yeah, that, that was, was not a ball. year ago. I think the timing got off because of COVID Maybe. and everything. Anyway, yeah. it's happening tonight. Oh, wow. And in the past, Chloe and um, Kendall, no, Chloe and Courtney were never invited. Yeah. Now they've been invited too. So Kravis is there, Courtney and Travis, and they're all there. And it's really great that they were able to wrap this up. She asked, can I redo my whole testimony because I was rattled when the, it came up that uh, Rob had done the revenge porn and put out these texts and stuff for yeah. like, you know, before they take down. The judge is like, no, you're not redoing your whole thing for 11 hours. No, like, so the jury right now is, has been in deliberation since late Thursday. So they had all Friday that they were deliberating. And during that, it came out where they said, we do release Kim Kardashian from this. Based on her testimony and her texts and her emails, we feel that she has did no way influence the ending of the Black China show. No. But so now it's just really against Chloe, Chris, and um, Kylie. And what they said and what they texted and part of it was Kylie said, hey, I don't like filming, but I'll do my own show to replace the, the episodes when this thing right. ends because this is so volatile. She tried to – you know, uh, abused my brother and she broke a gingerbread house and she put an iPhone. <laughs> she broke. They, they said when they brought yeah. that up that Pete Davidson showed up. 
oh. at the final, to hear the final things to support Kim. Oh, and that's he, right. I and he it. did chuckle during the, the yeah. gingerbread because they'd always do these big gingerbread. Chris used they to send it, it to like her really good friends too. So it would oh, say like really? people's names and stuff. It's like out of solving, you want to find a, a gingerbread, gingerbread house. People solving. make them. Yes. Yeah. They're not like little kids making them. They're like extremely fancy with like second stories and like you oh. get a modern farmhouse and like it's like amazing. <laughs> And they go for, you know, it's Los Angeles. They have the so open like, doors, yeah. the slider doors. It's and LA. Open, they go for $900,000. <laughs> One bedroom. Uh, really, if you can't find yeah. property, maybe we can just have, maybe that's how we'll solve we the whole this problem. Yeah. Just gingerbread house. lives in a gingerbread. When it rains, it's a bitch. It gets soggy as fuck. But. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she's out. Okay. So she got to ho- go watch uh, Pete Davidson perform with Dave Chappelle at the Hollywood Bowl, and then they hopped on a plane, and then they went to the correspondence the correspondence dinner. dinner. I feel like there's a lot going on, yes. yeah, because they went this. Pete Davidson was just at this Netflix uh, comedy that festival. Was with, wasn't that with Dave Chappelle? That's what I'm talking about. No, no. Oh, then he did something one. last night. Oh, uh, like it's called Pete Davidson and Friends, and he brought out Machine Gun Kelly at the end. To oh. sing to the fans. Oh, sing. Well, at least he wasn't trying to do a quick five. He did kind of do a little uh. bit of time, too. I know. Enough. Enough. So done with it. Um, anyway, so here they are. Uh, and the it has been proven. Well, let me see if I have this. So I, so it has been proven by Hollywood Unlocked. Well, actually, Ashley Louise wrote this, and then Hollywood Unlocked put, did it. A lot of people felt that, that the big butts are going out of style. Yeah, I think the big boobs, too. And the, her, her butt was extremely small at the Hollywood, um, at the correspondence dinner. Oh. Kim's. And so this was a side-by-side photo that this girl did. And clearly she let it, she's scaling it down. That is definitely smaller. Definitely but, smaller. It yeah. looks, and it looks so much better. And, and, and the rumor is she's going to be wearing um, the actual dress that Marilyn Monroe sang Happy Birthday, Mr. President in. Oh, at the if Met she, Ball? If she, this is the rumor. If she can fit in it, and my immediate, my immediate thought was there's no way she can fit in it with that ass. But now I'm like looking at her in this outfit. I'm like, she might be able to fit in it. Wow. Because they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to alter it or whatever. Yeah. She's getting to borrow it. Which, okay. by the way, did you see hear that about that, Marilyn Monroe, on Netflix, the audio files? No. I was just gonna, you, the last time I was on, you told me something about Marilyn Monroe, and I was a little shocked that she brushed her vagina. Oh, that was during my live show. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that there was an article. I remember reading one book where this girl interviewed her, and she's like, do you mind if I brush my hair? And she's yeah, like, I know. no, not at all. And then she just like opened her legs and just was like completely brushing her bush. And so I – Always wondered was that. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think she was super sexual, and in the Netflix audio tapes that they like collected for whatever. So they have like, pe- they like interviewed people right. from like twenty five years ago that are like all dead. Um, they like they were talking about no, like we knew exactly the studio people knew exactly who you could get late. Which of these young starlets coming through were down to fuck? Yeah, and you knew who they were, and she was on the list. Oh, okay. So she was. And that at that time, not everybody – because I would ask my mom. I'm like, Mom, how did all these people sleep around if, like, the pill wasn't invented? Yeah. I, got, I don't know. Maybe there were secret abortions or – I don't know. I don't Maybe. know how people could be, yeah. like, that promiscuous back then. But I guess they were. And um, so, you know, and, and then basically the it, it concludes what I've said because I've interviewed people too about Maryland. Right. That 100 percent the Kennedys – we're done. They, it was weird. She was sleeping with JFK. Yeah. And then she started sleeping with Bobby and she was really into Bobby. Uh-huh. And Bobby's and JFK's sister was married to this guy, Peter Lawford, who basically I was know. like their, Actor. their pimp. Yeah. Like he, they lived in LA. And so they would come out to LA, the brothers, and people didn't know who they were yet. Cause yeah. they were just like senators from the East coast that he wasn't the president yet. So he was like seeing Marilyn like in the fifties. Peter uh, Lawford. No, JFK. Oh, yeah. But Peter and and the sister of the brothers knew that. Yeah. And the sister, like, loved it that she was coming over to the Malibu house and, like, screwing her brothers. And, like, these women were like, oh, yeah, they, they were like – the brothers would be, like, screwing other women while, like, their wives were, like, drinking martinis and smoking a cigarette outside of the homes in Malibu. And, Different like, everybody time. just – 
Wild. And so then what she knew about – and then it was really a political thing why they killed her. It wasn't a cheating thing. Yeah. It was that they had a conversation about like atomic bombs or something. And she was there and she told a friend, oh, you know, they're doing these atomic bomb testings. <laughs> oh, really? And then that got back to the government or got back to the yeah, – and then they were like – We got to get rid of her. We got to get rid of her. Loose lips. Yeah, we got to get rid – She's brought she's- – She's brushing her loose brushing lips. Her loose lips. And she's talking with yeah. her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. that's pretty Oh, that's okay. interesting. It's juicy. So Courtney, oh, what am I say if there's anything else? Okay. Also, Ray J is saying this whole storyline on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, where there was a secret tape, a second tape of their sex tape together, he and Kim. And Ray J uh, sorry, Kanye goes to Ray J, according to the Hulu show, gets this like suitcase. And then presents it to Kim as she's about to go on stage to do SNL and in front of all of her friends. And he's got a hoodie on and everything. And she's like, look what um, Kanye brought to me. And it's the hard drive and the original computer of where the second supposed second sex tape was. So now she's safe. This tape will never get out there again. Oh, very, That's, very weird. That is very weird. Anyway, Ray J say it's Ray J says it's not true. This whole story is not true. Yeah, and that I don't know if there wasn't another, but also I'm like, so what if someone gives you the zip drive or the hard drive or whatever? There, it's all over the internet. I mean, if, if like Tommy and Pammy Lee's yeah <laughs> video is everywhere forever, like what are you telling me? Like it's not there isn't like a copy somewhere. Right. <laughs> it's, it's every, yeah, there's no way you could just. Nothing is – if it's on the internet, it's on the internet now. I think, think you could ever get it. I mean it's fine. The... Even if it's true, that still couldn't totally put your mind at ease unless like Ray J like signed off on something saying, so, yes, it was in my possession. Now I'm giving it to you and like – Right. And they didn't share that part. But anyway. And just what Kim Kardashian needed before she heads out to Sun Night Live. Well, and... I think she did. I think this is oh, this yeah. is what's so weird because remember the only thing that we could never talk about – on Chelsea was the sex tape. Yeah. And that's all this season has been about on the new Hulu show. Oh, really? I It's about watched. the sex tape. Yeah. She made a joke about the sex tape in the um, SNL yeah. um, monologue. Remember she made a joke when we were writing with her in the uh, writer's room. She, uh, we were all sitting there. They were sitting, for those of you who don't know, with Chelsea Laley. They, yeah. were, they were hosting one day or something. Okay. Three of them. Okay. Chloe, Kim, and, and Courtney. Uh, Courtney. Yeah. And uh, there was a story about a tape. Another yeah. person, some, yeah. not even a sex tape, it was something. Yeah. And she, we were like making jokes about it and thinking about making it, putting it in the show. And she's like, I think I'm the last person who should be making jokes about sex tapes or something. Oh, about Remember? someone else's yeah, sex yeah. tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're like, oh, wow. She's got a sense of humor about it. Totally. Yeah, which I didn't know. I mean, that was a, way, a long time ago. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it was a good rule for them to make, though, because otherwise, every time there was a topic – the people would have gone there and it would have been reminded right. and repetitive. Because I think there's a certain point where like there's probably 16-year-olds walking the earth that loved the Kardashians that had no idea that no. this was even how she got anything. I, honestly, at this point. Who cares? Who cares? And I'm like, even if she all of a sudden goes, you know what? I did do this tape yeah, with Ray J. Look- I saw what it did for Paris. I was like, let's put a little story behind it. Act like I'm horrified. Right. And just kind of catapult me, put some eyes on us. And then once the, the eyes are on us, we can show the world how funny, smart, and interesting we are. And, and it's already and legitimate. That's it. like, like, yeah. I would be like, good for you. Like, literally, who cares? When we were watching the Tommy and Pamela Lee thing, Drake was like, who cares? Why is she still crying about this sex tape? Like, kids, people are like, I know. I mean, this generation doesn't give a shit. No. Like, who, it's not a scandal. Certainly not. Remember how what a scandal it was that there were some nude photos that Madonna took in college, but yes. it was just like her naked boobs, they and it was like Madonna Pena. took some nude. I was like, yeah, of course she did some nude sh- shots. Yeah, it's like she had hairy armpits. Remember they were in penthouse, hairy armpits. Yeah, those are back, hairy armpits. I know. I not. I'm not for that. Me neither. I'm gonna. I got to put my foot down on something. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Armpit Girls, come on. Well, now it's in a Dove commercial. Have you seen the Dove commercial? I know, listen, the Dove, they're going to date everybody, everybody. I know, the Dove commercials are just like uh, uh, stretch marks, Harry Armpits, and like just a nude bra. Like at I least know. get a cute bra going. I know. I listen, Dove, I like your products, but come on now. Enough. Uh, enough. So let's enough. cut it out. <laughs> I was at Target. Okay. In the beauty department. Yeah. Where 
actually, ironically, you can buy these little razors. Everyone's into them. It's called dermablation. When we were told, when we were growing up, if you had like a little mustache or something uh-huh. as a girl, it was like, never shave it. It'll come back so much thicker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, they're like, no, that was a myth. Fucking shave your hairy face, bitch. And now I'm obsessed with like seeing old TV and old photos of people's just peach fuzz just Marilyn blowing Monroe. in the wind. She, Marilyn Monroe had a very hairy face. I've seen pictures. <laughs> she did. I'm not kidding. There's real, there's pictures of it. No, it's not, I'm not, yeah, it's true. Anyway, so you can buy these little razors. You don't need to make an electric and you just do like maybe one or two days and throw them away and it's like super satisfying and your face feels amazing. You do it like once a week, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, at, at the, at Target is this huge photo of this girl like with her hair and a towel, like she just washed her face. And it's so enormous. It she has the hairiest face. Like oh. it's not great skin. And it's the hairiest face. And I'm like, okay, I get that it's Who, supposed to you be. Sure, it's not that swimmer, that trans she's, swimmer? No. She, <laughs> <laughs> no. It was okay. a female with a hairy face. Yeah. And it's like, it's fine, but like, what are you trying to sell here? Yeah. Like, I, we don't need perfect looking people, but I know we say it all the time on this podcast, but you know we everybody. Pretty people cannot get a. Break. But we all <laughs> let's come on. I think if we all voted on it, we all want pretty people back. Oh, I, I, my this eyes, is coming from a my, six. My eyes, my yeah. eyes are burned. I watch TV and I'm just like, ah! like it's know. horrifying. Come on, we were just talking about the Kennedys and Peter Lawford and Marilyn Monroe. We need them back. She really was so beautiful. A lot of things people don't know about Marilyn Monroe is that she was one of the first people to get a nose job. Really, it's like a it, not a lot of people are getting nose jobs, and her nose was not bad, but it was a little bulbous. And then you can see the difference. And then she got a nose job, and it made a huge difference, like a Megan Fox nose job. Like she was pretty before, but a little tweak, like a Kim Kardashian, a little tweak, and you're like, perfection. We had an aunt in the Frangiola family, and I'm talking, I'm talking late '60s, maybe first ever boob job. I think like one of the, she was in her she's late 101 60s. Now. Wait, she's she, still alive. No. She was not in a. a is she doing like, under boob or is she doing I, I don't know. just tits? She, she lives the down nips, in Florida. Hard nips out or? I think she. I, I mean, I'm not kidding. She had big boob, and it was the first, like a first boob job. One of the in first, the 1960s. In or? the six, 50s or 60s, she got it done. My and, my mom knew a divorcee that had a boob job, but she didn't even know boob jobs existed. So she saw her at Ralph's, and she said, "Elaine, look at." How- and she goes, oh, Pam, I just do this exercise. Yeah. I must, I must. And my mom believed it. <laughs> that was like a Gilda Radner sketch on Saturday Night Live. Remember, I must improve my bust. They put, I mean, I don't know what was in there, but I, this woman, I'm not kidding. She's a, yeah. Her name is Rosie. She's 101 years old now. And the same, I think it's old, two, two old soup cans in there or something. I mean, she's like two big tits. <laughs> I always think about like if they ever get to a place on earth where they're like, okay, we just can't, we need we need the property. We need to just exhume all these bodies. Yeah. They're like three hundred years old. No one's visiting them. Who cares? And then they start, and there's just like there's just, just implants so everywhere. <laughs> just implants got, everywhere. I know. Yeah, you got to think like Miami and stuff. It's like just implant Vegas graveyards are just implants. Oh my god, that's fun. Um, okay, let me see what else we have. Okay, let's get to the Johnny. Um, Johnny Depp. This yeah. is the latest stuff that's happened since. I recorded last Jennifer Grey, uh, who was his girlfriend and fiance. I did they not got know about engaged that. after two weeks. They were engaged for nine months. They broke up. She said he um, was very possessive of her and very jealous when yeah. he would come back. Anyway, that didn't work out. That was probably the only like negative girlfriend thing, and it still was nothing physical abuse or anything. Just a little right. possessive. The bodyguard said that he smoked weed a lot. And did coke, but it didn't change his personality. And the bodyguard said he did witness when Amber punched him in the face. Whoa. And she did call him a deadbeat dad and a C-U-N-T. She called him. Uh, Amber called Johnny. But then I heard a video of him calling her one, too. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, the uh, there's audio, audio of that. Yeah. This is just new stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his, uh, his, audios, his audio and his text messages about her are bad. Um, and the, the fight in the kitchen is pretty bad. Yes. Where he's slamming the cabinet doors and stuff. Ugly, oh, and pour, ugly kitchen. And then pouring the big bottle glass the big of red wine. That was, that was the mega wine. pint. Yeah. yeah, the mega pint. Yeah. Um, a manager said that he did see him pass out on a beach. Um, 
in front of his kids, and I'm hey, yeah. been there. No, I know. I was like, so <laughs> that, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, the beach was where he lived. I know. I, yeah, that one doesn't bother me. I mean, at I passed all. out on a lounge chair in my own backyard. <laughs> my kids have definitely been around. <laughs> yeah, everybody, and there might have been a mm-hmm. mega pint of Chardonnay right. right next to me on yeah. a sunny day. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, in 2016, Amber said, "Give me the SUV I'm currently using, some Range Rover, and three LA apartments." And I won't file the restraining order, and people won't n- need to know our messiness. So why didn't you just do that? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just getting gathered. I'm probably yeah. missing some stuff, but I'm saying the ACLU, who she said she was going to get the $7 million from the divorce, right. she was going to give half to the ACLU and half to children's hospitals. Children's hospital has said no. We didn't get anything, and she blew off her Christian service hours or whatever. She was supposed right. to show up. And – um ACLU said we didn't get three point five, but we did get three hundred fifty thousand. Oh, all right. Well, and then there good. was some other amount that she gave to Elon for some charity. That's weird. Elon Musk. A He's in, they dated at one point, right? Yes, and they they think that her child that she had through surrogate might be he might be the father. No one knows who oh, the really? father is. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, she has since hired a new PR agency. I saw that. Because she's obviously – no one's loving her. Every TikTok is free Johnny Depp. Every Which t- is – I it's I mean, I know there's always – there is a school of thought that yes. believe all women. And, you know, just yeah. just seeing that kitchen freak out alone is like, all right, this guy's a little I don't think unhinged. it was a delight 24-7. I do no. not think it yeah, was easy. Right. And I don't think it's easy to ever be with someone that abuses drugs and alcohol. And right. whether you want to believe he's a full addict or just an abuser of it, he abused it. Yeah. He, you know, he got out of hand and his, you know, I don't care that his bodyguard said his personality didn't change. Right. You know, you, everybody's one with a partner that when they're drinking or getting high and you're not, it's not fun to be around. Now, if you're both doing it, okay, because there's a lot of things that say that she enjoyed it too and she did ecstasy and offered it to oh, people. Really? And yeah. So she when did, does she begin to testify? Because she hasn't testified yet, right? No. Not yeah. yet. And so that's going to be – and then there was another story where they said, didn't you – didn't he whip out his penis to pee in the foyer? They asked somebody on the stand that, and that guy was like, no, I never, I've never seen his penis. Yeah. And that, that made John, Johnny chuckle. A lot of people love how much he's laughing. Well, that – yeah. I mean, let's face it. The guy is – that's why he's Johnny Depp. He's got a – he's a charismatic guy. Like, it's fun to watch him laugh and joke and – Yeah. That doesn't surprise me that he's – that people like him. Of right. Of course we like him. He's Johnny Depp. Um, but that doesn't mean that, I don't know, whatever. This was a good point. Depp said, finished up his testifying, he said he would never have cut off his own finger because he loves playing guitar. I do believe now that the finger, the top of the finger was severed in a fight with her in which a vodka bottle, I guess, was thrown and cut off his that's finger. That's what I heard, yeah. But I still think, like, logistically, that's a little hard to have happened. Well, yeah. I mean, because you got to. It like it would have had to crack break. and then like and then be coming down like a guillotine. Right, I don't know. I don't but, know. I think yeah. it, I think the fight was messy. Whatever it was, and I don't really know if we know. Um, we heard about the you know the. Um, well, let me see. Let me get to this. Um, Depp and Heard racked up a hundred sixty thousand dollar bill with a wine merchant. Um, Okay, who cares? I remember Jen brought that up, Jen Kirkman. Remember oh, how yeah. much he spent on wine? Yeah. Well, they went through these movies. The the manager right. went through the movies, and it's like twenty million here, eight million there, another ten million that there. That he made, or yeah, like yeah. for each movie. So I mean, he was worth a lot of money, right? Uh, and then uh, no one's even saying then you invest that and how much more it's worth after. But it's gone now, or well. I mean, I think he still has money, but the opportunities are yeah. what are are gone right. because of the article. And now the ACLU is saying, no, we were like encouraging Amber and we had our hands in that article as well. Right. Which, you know, people have issues with the ACLU. There's mm-hmm. not, it's not like a, a perfect organization. So you kind of wonder like, gosh, did they kind of push, you know, that it right. makes me feel a little bit like, you know, did they get in her head and do this thing and, and put this out and maybe she never intended it to be so world-renowned or maybe she didn't intend for it to hurt his career? Right. I, that's what I think the, the jury is going to go have to go back and wonder. Was her intent 
by doing this to put out false information to ruin his career. Mm-hmm. And if there's doubt in that, then now what's the hope here in the end? I mean, that that Johnny Depp is wins money and the debt. Kids? Well, Johnny's asking for fifty million. Yeah. She's countering from who? for where's that going to come from? from? Him, her. She doesn't have fifty million, right? Yeah. But even if he gets awarded it, right? will be it'll be out there in the universe that a jury decided what she said was a lie and it was unfair to hurt his career, and then hopefully he'll gain his career and his popularity back. Mm, I, yeah. I, I, I go back and forth. I'm not, I was, I'm not, I, I was listen, like, I, I think he's going to be working a lot after this. You do? I think he will get something for sure. But, it may not be a pirate-level blockbuster, no. but I think it could be like – a Netflix series. I don't that, know about that because like a giant company like a Disney or a Netflix, I don't think they can just because of I, I don't think they could get in bed with him, so to speak, you know, because it's, even it's too if, much. Even if he's awarded this money and they pro- and they and they a jury May, decides. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um. So she Amber admitted to uh, sending text messages to Elon and that he was a filling space in her heart, and then. Um, Oh, her initial ask for divorce settlement was four million. She ended up getting seven, and then um, a security guard did testify that Heard admitted to pooping in the bed she shared with Depp and throwing his phone out the window after April sixth, two thousand sixteen fight. What do you think is worse? That mm-hmm. your significant other throws your phone out the window that you can't retrieve, uh-huh. or that she shit in the bed. Well, I would definitely say phone out the window. You it's can't worse. Retrieve. That's hundreds. For I think me, it's a lot for worse. For me, I don't even know my Apple ID. Yeah, number. it's a lot worse. I mean, I, I listen. I've cleaned up a lot of shit yeah, in my I know. life. <laughs> so I, I can clean up a yeah, shit. Yeah. What I would do is just take the whole sheet. That's it. Toss it. You don't Toss have to it. get rid of the mattress. No, it's no. it wasn't pee. Yeah, she probably got a mattress pad underneath. There's several layers before you get. Any, and honestly, well, it wasn't a choice. She did both, but I was just thinking about the choice of it. It, even if even if it went to the mattress through the, I don't know. Johnny Depp strikes me as the type of guy who may sleep without a sheet, you know, <laughs> just right on a mattress. Um, and then you get a little uh, Febreze or something, scrub it out. I feel like he yeah. wasn't that horrified by it. Like no. he kind of says, like he thought it was kind of funny, and he called it like another name. Yeah. And I'm like, I almost thought he was just like that fucking crazy bitch. Like I don't I, even think he was like that mad about that. I think he was like, wow, she really, she really knows how to one up this fighting game we have going. Well, also he's a he's a, got children, and I think once you have kids, I mean, poop just becomes part of your life. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. You're just like fuck it. You don't think it's gonna happen, but it happens pretty quickly. Oh, I know. Yeah. That you think you, the poop is the grossest thing until you have a child. They're like, oh, it's just in my life now. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, Amber Heard has a less than 10 minutes of screen time in the Aqua 2 report. Well, that's so, good. Yeah, I think they probably knew not to share. I tried to watch Aquaman. I don't even. Now, I don't like any of those things about mm, superheroes then and don't stuff. don't watch this one because it's long no, and I couldn't tell. No. Make heads and tells of what's happening in it. Uh, but. Is has Amber Heard done any? Uh, I'm not familiar with her. Like as an I actress, I guess people were like, "Stop shitting on her." She's been in like 30 things. Oh, she has. I didn't know. Yeah, but yeah. I just clearly not at his level. But he yeah. was like a huge oh, blockbuster the because world. of the pirates. Yeah, but like I never watched the pirate thing. I wasn't into pirates, but he did some other good. Donnie no, Brasco's I, a great movie. I mean, yeah. he's done some good movies. No, he's great. Yeah, people love him. Okay, now this was juicy, and someone brought it up. It was from 2019. This girl, um, Diane Neal, she was on Law and Order as an attorney. Mm-hmm. And this Daily Mail article came out, like I said, a couple years ago. She was breaking up with someone who they lived they lived together, and he was a magician. And he he had an audio of her berating him, much like Johnny and Amber. Yeah. And I went back to listen to this, and it's horrible. She's like. Oh, you you know what? Maybe finally I'll get some emotion out of you. What what do I have to do? Because I'll fucking kill you. She says, like, I'll kill you. And then she says, um, I'll kill your dog in front of you. Oh, shit. And then she directs her attention to the little dog. Hi, Charlie. You hear it all. Or what the, she's like, hi, Charlie. Mm, what should I do? Should I blow your brains out in front of your daddy? Oh, fuck. She says it to the dog. Really? Yeah. 
And then she wrote to the Daily Mail, like, this guy has tortured me. I've lost everything, like, financially, the house I own, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But in audio of talking to a dog and mm-hmm. saying, I yeah. mean, it is so creepy when she's like, oh, hi, like, acting like it's sweet. What if I strangled your little neck at the dog? Like, I mean, like. Wow. Like, I could never, I mean, that's why, you know, this chick will never work again. Isn't it nice that you don't have to be in a relationship where you don't have to worry about people audio taping you? Like, I was like, when do you go? What, what has to happen in your relationship to go to the point where you're like pressing record on your phone right. to get the, to catch them in something, you know? How many rabbits did this guy have to pull out of hats <laughs> for her to go enough with this fucking guy? Yeah. Well, he recorded her. Oh, yeah. He That's recorded her. She wasn't recording him. Oh, but I yeah. think he probably was – when you're with someone who's saying crazy stuff, Yeah. obviously that probably wasn't the first time that she threatened the little dog. Yeah. I, anybody that threatens your pet – as like the ultimate thing, very fatal attraction fatal with attraction, the bunny. Yeah. Like anything that's like, oh, I'm going to cr- hurt you. That's right. more like that's like someone killing your kids. Like I mean, yeah, come no on. Kidding. So anyway, I don't think she's going to be hired by Law and Order soon. Oh, this is a good one. Tell me about the Bill Murray, famous comedian. He's like 75 or 80 now. Well, he's not. What only, happened? I mean, he's just like not only a famous comedian. I mean, Bill Murray's Bill Murray. You know, right. He's bigger than. I'm just letting the kids know. But you know what I mean? Like, he's one of the biggest stars in the world. Yes, yes. uh, And I guess we all know, I mean, if if you've followed anything about, you know, Hollywood or whatever, he's notoriously a bit of a prick. That's what I've heard. Oh, okay. Uh, Always on sets, he's been a bit of a prick. I guess uh, there's a movie called What About Bob with him and Richard Dreyfuss where it was just awful. I mean, he was very awful to Richard Dreyfuss. And um, so much so that they had to hire bodyguards to protect Richard Dreyfuss on the set. Oh, wow. And who knows? I mean, Richard and Dreyfuss. And now this stuff's is, coming up. Richard yeah. Dreyfuss has had issues with actors on sets, too. There's been a lot. You know, he's always, I don't know if he's sensitive, yeah. but whatever. Then Lucy Liu, I guess, had some issue with him as well on Charlie's, Charlie's Angels. And um, they never talked specifically about what happened, but apparently he said some things to her, and that was an issue. Mm. And so it does, it, these have always been out there. I mean, there's right. nothing, nothing. And now this is the latest one, but I guess it's a new world we live in. So if somebody complains on a set these days, you shut the film down. You know, right. and that's what happened. It was being directed by Aziz Ansari, and they shut the movie down. I don't know if it shut down for good or it, they're just gonna they're gonna uh, you know do some. I mean, uh, Christian Chenoweth had a huge light fall on fall her head. On her head. Mm-hmm. And she went to the hospital. Yeah. They continued filming that show. And then they, I mean, I don't know how much I can share, but from what she told me, because I was like, well, what, you know, what do you, are you that was on The like, Good Girl or something? Wasn't it on like a TV show on CBS? Or... I don't know, but she how, how she was going to do it. Like she had a tour set where yeah. she would do like cartwheels and sing and all that stuff she couldn't do. And it was, but it was like, I, I don't want to complain and I don't want to file a lawsuit. This is my opinion. This is what I think happened. Right. And because I, I am a big television personality and there might be all these opportunities, possible variety show. Right. Oh, dangling this. Like, we want you to do this and this. Yeah. And then four years later, when none of that stuff comes to fruition. Right. Then are you going to go back and say, I mean, I'm sure whatever it was, she had to sign a million papers. But like, yeah, you're right. And then And then this was just like. Someone said that's my bagel, or well, no, I don't know what it was. I'm sure it was. Much well, worse than that. But what it I've must heard, have been much worse. He so was just, shutting he down. Just, so now is he the just movie talked just to him. Not, I don't know. Not going to happen now. I think they're going to investigate it. Internal investigation, which I always love. But what does that mean? Like, who's doing the investigating? I know, like yeah. who, like the yeah, right. the producer. The, yeah. uh, we're doing the internal investigation. So I mean, yeah. a couple of producers would be like, "Who said what?" But now here's just the rumors. Uh, apparently, there's an actress called Kiki Palmer. Okay. Uh, I don't. Re- I'm not familiar, but. I, whatever. I think she's, a, that's yeah. what, who they say might be the actress that they're talking about because she's the only one who's listed in the credits at this point. I think they were very early in the filming of the movie. Oh, okay. So she had a big part. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, and so they, they, because he just went on, he was at some thing and it was on one of these financial shows that they spoke with him about because he was at some thing, financial yeah. convention or whatever. And he spoke about it at length. He, I don't know if you watched the, did you watch the interview with no. him? And he talked about it and he said, listen, I, I'm, you know, I basically said that I'm a prick 
and I grew up in an era where you could be a prick. And if I have to change, I will. Like, I didn't realize this was the new world we live in, and I'll be happy to change, you know? Like, that's kind of what he said. He took credit, you know, yeah. uh, he took, and he said, I'm, I'm, I will, I'm sorry, and I'll change. Yeah. I won't be that guy anymore. But I'm 75, and I didn't know the rules. So, I mean, it's not a bad way to go about it. You know what would be such a funny sketch if we were to be doing sketches? <laughs> Is a class... Like, just of old, the SNL, steal my idea, I don't care. Yeah. Everybody imitate, do an impression of older actors, like a Robert De Niro yeah. or what, and they have to go to a class where it's like all these things, like these are the words you can't say, this is the place, these are the things you yeah. can't say, and literally, like, teach them, like, beyond sexual harassment, like, just an educational thing of, like, a scenario, you put them in a scenario and it's like... Okay, this this woman's ahead of you at the craft services. Yeah. And she's taking a little long to butter her bagel. You're annoyed because you'd like to get your food. Um, what do you say to her? Now, be the old man. I'm going to be the girl doing my butter. An what do I man. say to her? They say, listen, Tootsie, move your, move your chicken ass out of the way so I could get my bagel. I mean, this broad shouldn't even be in the movie. It's a man's job. I mean, exactly. Then they yeah. say that's not correct, yeah. and there's. I mean, any agent right. that is representing anyone over sixty it's, should go. Let's go to lunch, and there should be a consultant there. Yeah. that like spends a few hours with them to re-educate. Well, them. I don't know if you remember. It, it yeah. was not that long ago. It was a couple during the be, the beginning of the Me Too movement, where everybody was each week somebody else was going down. Yes, it was that something that, that was kind of a. That was such an oh, exciting time in my life. Exci- we were waking up every morning. Oh, my morning. God. I'd Who's like next? tingle. Yeah, it go on. It was so nice. Yeah. They're all back now. Yeah, <laughs> selling, out, so selling out arenas. Um, but anyway, um, they, they asked – it was some convention or whatever. They asked Dustin Hoffman about it. Yeah. And Dustin Hoffman at this point is 78 years old or whatever. He says awful weird things. I know. Things. And he's he super said, strange. And he said something along the lines of – you know, even the guy who was interviewing him, I forget who it was. It might have been John Oliver. Yeah. He was trying to, like, help him along. Like, are you sure you want to say that? And he's like, yeah, these broads don't know nothing, you know. And they were, I'm not kidding. You have not heard a word from Dustin Hoffman since. I think they said, listen, you had a good career. It's time to go away. You know, yeah. like, you're done. Because there were yeah. some things coming out about him from, like, way back. There was, like, red carpet stuff where he'd say the most weird and inappropriate yeah. things. And you're like... Does he have Alzheimer's? Is he joking? Like, right. what the hell is that? Yeah. Yeah. So Interesting. Um, Lisa Renna posted a naked photo from what I believe was her Playboy shoot from about 20 years ago because Paulina Pova, what's her Paris name? Paris Kova. Posted a bikini shot and highlighted a next to it a mean comment from a mean man that says, like, why do you pose in bikinis? You're old. When you're old and ugly, don't be doing – so then, of course, her oh. body's, like, amazing. So then all the other thirsty people were like, oh, good. This is my opportunity to post my really great naked photo yeah. and act like it's, like, women empowerment and don't be an ageist. Right. Anyway, I just remember that because I remember this. And that's, that, that's some picture. And, how, do, how does – I can't believe that Instagram let that happen. You could see, like – I don't know. I wonder if I'm going to remove it because I don't yeah. – um, I thought you'd like this. A This guy identifies as – Fictosexual. Uh huh. He married a hologram bride, but now he struggles to bond with her. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, yes. Yeah, he's a 28 year old. No, he, he married a 16 year old. Maybe that was a problem because he was oh, 28 she was and she was only 16. She was an anime character. Yeah. In the form of a hologram. And, um, so he's sexually attracted to fictional characters rather than real people. And four years into their marriage, however, he's just hit a roadblock because her technology has been eliminated. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Making it impossible for him to communicate with her. So That's tough. Um, it's just really hard. Uh, he just he no longer can talk to her. And he spent over 17000 on the ceremony. Wow. Yes, yeah. and he always he He's like, he says he always knew that he could never be with a real human being because of his intense attraction to anime characters. I mean, they are kind of cute. Yeah, they are pretty hot. I don't know if I have a photo of no, her. No, there's like a full on. Oh my god, she's like so cute. She has blue hair, 
And she has like a little tie and she has a lot of style. And yeah. they always have like the best noses. And very big, real small big noses. eyes. Yeah, real big eyes yeah. and good noses. I can get it. She doesn't even have a nose. It's like. It's barely. Yeah, it's like a filtered it, nose. It's like but that it's, nose that Michael Jackson had at the end where it was just like coming oh, off. Oh, yeah. He would, yeah. I like, let me get to my other story. Madonna, she's out uh, partying, but her boyfriend and she broke up. Oh, no. The boyfriend the, the that was. 22-year-old? Yeah. Well, they're 35 years age difference. Yeah. I think she's like 63 or 4. So she got out on stage with um, Madeline. Is that Madeline? I don't even know who that is. Is that a big He's a, singer? Yeah, yeah. He's a, a big uh, Latino star. Anyway, she was out. Medellin. She's doing weird I things. Think. She's grabbing her crotch and good for her. Um, I thought this was interesting. This Dan, was an interesting one. Dan Aykroyd, another old person. You're like, God, oldies. Okay, anyway, Dan Aykroyd and this girl Donna Dixon. Also in Ghostbusters with Bill Murray. They have been married – for over 40 years or almost 40 years. I remember they were one of those couples because she was such a pretty blonde and he was like so big, like in Ghostbusters, like right. 1982, 83. I'd always see them on like Inside Edition and Entertainment Tonight and in my People magazine. They were like this beloved, cute couple because she was like really pretty. Anyway, they had a couple kids and now they said, listen, we're, we're living separate lives but we're not going to get divorced. We're not breaking up the business. And of course, we'll still co-parent, but their kids are all adults. Right. Or close to being adults. And I kind of thought, okay, I think this is so interesting. And my opinion is they probably have been living pretty separate existences for like a decade. Mm -hmm. But the reason they're coming out with it now is one of them wants to go to the Four Seasons in Maui (laughs) with their lover Right. And be open and holding hands and acting like a couple. Wow! And that's so good. I think that they have to say, "Look, we're living separate lives. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be a, not that it's not a scandal, but we're not getting divorced because it's just not worth you it." You also got to be careful in a situation like this. And I'm not sure how Donna Dixon. I know Dan, Dan Eckert's probably doing fine, but Paulina Poroskova, to go back to her, had a similar situation with Rick Ocasek, the lead singer of The Cars. Oh, yes. They would, same thing. We got divorced after 40 years of marriage. We're going to have, we're going to live it. We're living a lie. We're good. We, our kids are fine. They didn't and get then, divorced, so they were just nope. separated. Or they did Whatever get they were. I don't know, legally, okay. whatever it was. But they were separated. It, okay. They were no longer together. And he died. Here comes the will. She got nothing, and there was a lot of money there. there was a lot oh. of cars, money, and he, I think she you're was right. Out. I think they were legally separated, yeah. but not divorced. And then she claimed in his illness, she came back into the fold and was really, really there. Right. But prior to his illness that caused him to die, he was like, "Screw this bitch," and adjusted. That's what I think. The will without her knowledge. So you got to be careful if this Donna Dixon wants to run around in the Four Seasons Maui. Make sure Dan Aykroyd puts in the will. I get that Ghostbusters money. Yes. You know, I don't want to be out. Definitely. I would definitely think if this is your thing and you have been married for that long, just make sure that there's a, a – this is the time you also do a post up. People don't talk about post ups enough. I think they're a great thing to do. What's a, what's a post up? So once you've been married a while, uh-huh. maybe someone's cheated or something. Okay. People do this with cheating a lot. Yeah. And they're like, please, please, I want to stay married to you. So then you go to the lawyer and you write up something that you're like, if he cheats again and, you know, then I get this amount of money. Yeah. And like, though he promises not to cheat, but if he does, you all, and then you already kind of work out what the divorce will be. Wow. So if we do get divorced because of your cheating ass, I, I'm staying with you because I know that the hard part of breaking up is done. I know I'm going to walk away with a house, with this, with that, and this much of the 401k. Yeah. So I will forgive you, but I just, you know. Okay. I agree with that. So, um, Post now. Oprah Winfrey says her friends made fun of her for being so careful during the pandemic. I didn't leave my home for 322 days, literally. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was like Ellen, you know, same thing at the home. It was the hundred million dollar yeah, house yeah, exactly, in Montecito in a trailer. Yeah. with a gym and people. I'm sure people were there delivering everything. Yeah, I'm and... sure she still had like I'm sure she had her living staff yeah. quarantining with her so that she mm-hmm. wasn't left alone to like mop her own floors. Yeah, all the finest foods, the chef, the work. Why would you have to leave? It's not like you were missing anything. And I remember prior to the vaccine. Gail, her best friend, uh-huh. made did a big post about it, how she um, 
was tested three times, went into quarantine, almost like you would to like film something, so that she could go over to Oprah's, hug her, and hang out with her. Yeah. So she still saw the people she wanted to I see. Know. But, I mean, I'd quarantine for 10 days, too, if I could hang out with Oprah yeah. the, at the estate. But the whole point of this is that she's doing like a special on like health care and how it's failed a, a, a lot of people in America. So, But I just thought that was kind of interesting because it's like, yeah, that's a luxury, do you think it was a luxury for the essential workers that didn't, you know, or the people yeah. that had to work at Trader Joe's? I know. So that makes you like a better person? Uh, no, I mean, yeah. I know. Maybe she's not saying that. But Listen, I'm a fan of Oprah. Where do you stand on Oprah? I'm a big fan. I've always loved Oprah. I don't I, have any hate for her. I don't have any, you know, and exactly. Like she probably, the next sentence of this was, of course, I had the luxury of staying home. Yeah. And I, I know. I feel people. like she like, always does what things is she? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Could she go yeah. to Lucky's that week? No, she couldn't. Yeah. You know, for that year, she didn't go to Lucky's restaurant and she didn't get on a plane. But yeah. you're living in a f- super fabulous place. and But I think she was probably really paranoid about getting sick. Yeah. Because she is an older woman and stuff. But um, She's holding it together. Anyway, I she looks beautiful and yeah. I still really want her show to come back. Okay, Olivia Wilde was served papers on stage and it's um, – so she was doing this Comic-Con panel. Yeah. And this guy walked up and was like, this is for you, Olivia. And it was her papers from Ted Lasso. What's his name? Sudeikis. Jason Sudeikis. Her yeah. husband, who she shares her two kids with, about some type of, you know, she was being served. Custody. Custody yeah. issue. Being served. Because, of course, she's with Harry Styles, who she right. directed in this movie that the trailer just dropped for her movie with Harry Styles. Yeah. It looks so good. Oh, it's really? It's coming out in September. I think oh, I have it here. Um it, it, what is it called? The Victory – oh, wait. It's called like Don't Worry Darling or something. But it's called um, – it is – it's my favorite. It's basically um, a movie where in the 60s they took all these guys and they're doing a secret victory project. So their wives and they move into this beautiful – community just for these people to work on this special government something oh, okay in palm springs so it's all palm springs 60s and it's palm all oh and it's like an yeah. avocado oven and all the women yes. have to do is just have a dinner ready by six all <laughs> some day. sort of casserole i mean that is all and i'm like yeah. i'm so jealous yeah. of that life and i never tell you about when i was up you, for that tv you show told me yeah it never happened and that tv show sounds amazing that should happen oh my god it was i guess they'd done it like in australia or something where they were going to take like a cul-de-sac and make it all 60s and i i was would be one of the people with my family and you have and to live like you're summer, in the 60s yeah and the boys were down i'm like you won't be able to like play on the computers and stuff but they'll have like 60s toys like you can ride a bike and right. i was so excited not to be on social media not to do the phone and then um yeah, I wouldn't be able to do my podcast or anything, but this yeah. was like four years ago and I was sick of the podcast and didn't care. It wasn't that successful back then. So I was like, who cares? Uh-huh. And I'm like, I get to wear like a cute uh-huh. outfit and just like drink in the day and play tennis with ladies. That sounds and sweet. all I have to do is like do a roast. Yeah. That's it. I'm like, I don't even care if I don't you have a microphone. You mean an actual roast, not a roast yeah. of people. No, like an yeah. actual roast. Like, Pot roast. Like the only thing is there were – and I looked it up. There were still dishwashers back then. Oh, yeah. I think so. And there were still refrigerators, obviously. And there weren't microwaves. Other than that, you yeah. had a car and you had a telephone. It really wasn't – you had air conditioning. Yeah. You had a pool. Electric knife. Remember the electric knife? You had electric knife. You had an electric can opener. Those are both gone. Like, and I don't know why the electric knife didn't stick around. It was Remember, it was like two knives that went back and forth. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> My father would cut the meat with the electric knife, okay? Here, stay with me. And then every time you pull it out, he would keep his finger on the thing so it would still be going. And it would just be shooting meat pieces all over <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. gross. Like, so how gross. hard is it just to carve just it with ca- a knife? I know. Like, is it that like, bad? how tough is this fucking yeah. meat? <laughs> anyway. Oh, um, you know, you didn't have microwaves, but you had a hot plate. You had this thing that you, that you put in the middle of the of the table, yeah. and you'd plug it in. So you'd put your casserole dishes and stuff. Yeah. And it was so great because your, your food stayed warm. Do you so remember the first at- microwave? Yeah, I think I mean I don't know what year it came out. Can you look when the first microwave? I remember watching a demonstration at a mall at some 
major appliance store. And the guy was demonstrating it to people. We were all standing there watching. And he, you know, cooked something, an egg or something. And then he touched the insides of the of the microwave because it doesn't make heat. Yeah. You know? And I, literally people gasped. They were like, oh. It was like. So, oh, because then he could put his hand. That he could that's... put it and just touch oh the God. sides of the microwave because it, it didn't make heat. Anyway. 1955. Yeah, but that was, they didn't become. Oh. If they didn't, yeah, but well, that was. Maybe I could have had a microwave That was like the, the first show. one. Yeah, so you oh, that ends up nice. being like, household nobody since had like the it late the 80s. 70s. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this movie looks really juicy. Yeah. So of course they're together, and you know it was all about being served on stage. Was that now he's saying that was not my intention? And pros- people that know process servers are saying, look, if you evade being served and right. they've gone to your house a bunch of times. Their job, they don't get paid until they serve you. Right. So their job is to find you. So if they know that that is when your kid's baseball game is or that you're, you know, I've seen comedians get served on stage. Eddie Griffin I one time. I was afraid I was going to get served um, when I was taping my special in Irvine. Oh, really? Yeah. When I was being sued, I was like, I hadn't been served yet, but I knew it had been registered yeah. that I was being sued, but I hadn't been, I hadn't received it yet. So I mentally prepared for that moment. And, and don't tried they to, legally have to say, like, you've been served? Yeah, they like, this away. is for you. Yeah. No, they just go, this is for you, Heather, or whatever. And then, and then it was like, well, how did he even get, how did this guy even get in there? A lot of them are off duty police officers. So right. they can have a, a badge too. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I'm a cop. Of course I can come in here, you know, or whatever. Right. But um, kind of interesting. And also, Christina Hack, who was married – this is the flip and flop girl who was married to the Tarek guy. Yeah. They got married. They got divorced. Then she married this guy named Aunt Anstead who is now dating Renee Zellweger. They got married and had a baby. Then she divorced him and now she's engaged to another guy. Yeah. So she kind of, you know, men good fall in love with her. She's pretty good looking. Anyway, he he tried to sue for – he tried to get full custody from her of the two-year-old, but he didn't get it. But I'm kind of obsessed with these people because they're all like good looking, and then, and then Tarek married this girl Heather Ray that looks they the one from Selling Sunset, Sunset and they look a lot alike. And Heather Ray um, did a post this early this week and like Friday, and it was her with him and like the two kids that are like I don't know nine and eleven, right? And they're all like like doing like silly faces, and she's like, so we're off to stagecoach this weekend, but boy, am I gonna miss these kiddos? And I'm like, listen. We still think you're a good stepmom. Yeah. Nobody who's going to stagecoach is like, oh, if only I could bring my kids with yeah, me right, right. that are 10 and 11. Yeah. Like, I mean, no. Nope. By the way, now just go, to yes. go back to that picture. I don't know if you see in the corner here of this picture, you see Ashley Judd. Uh, yes. See, it's tough. Show business is a son of a bitch. We've talked about several stories during this episode of people who've just lost their minds because they're in show business, you know. Yeah. And this picture uh, you can see right here is Ashley Judd. And I guess last night – the mom died yesterday, the day before. Yeah. Naomi Judd. Um, and but She did she, commit suicide. That's what they're saying, yeah. Yeah. She committed suicide, which is – And I don't know that, how, but yeah, she did. Yeah, I don't know how. That's what I heard too. Yeah. But anyway, I guess last night she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Yeah. Which I think it was just a coincidence that it happened – the same but wouldn't time. she have known that? I, I guess she did. Of course she did. Yeah. So I, I didn't realize it was suicide until this morning. I had yeah. Read that. But anyway, Ashley Judd and her and Winona went to accept, accept. the award and, and you know, whatever. And they're both crying, of course, you know, rightfully so. Uh, but then this picture, now all anyone's talking about is this picture of Ashley I know. Judd. Oh, my God. And like if you read the comments underneath any, I've read New York Post and whatever else, and the comments just awful. And it's just like, fuck, man. I it's, mean, what do you want? Like, I'm yeah. 50, <laughs> I've access to plastic surgery, and when I cry, I might look a little weird. Yeah, I know. It's just like you can't win. And, uh, like, if she would have been. Like you know, like Winona, her sister, who really doesn't seem to get anything done, she gets the same. She gets shit. Well, and other Winona's one. beautiful too. They're yeah, all beautiful. I know. And the mom was beautiful. The mom was no stranger to plastic surgery. Yeah. And you know, it did. I did make me wonder. Just since we're talking about it, and there's no disrespect at all. But I, when I heard that it was, you know, a mental illness type of suicide, is like yeah. that is at least what the daughters are saying. Mm-hmm. I was like, is she someone that just really struggled? Was her depression caused by the fact that she was 76 years old and aging? It happened. And she yeah. just was like, 
Yeah. A little maybe too not accepting of the changes. Yeah. I don't know. Very, very sad. It is sad. It's sad. And it's sad that this, you know, Ashley Judd has to go through this shit. Because some people are saying that it's not even, and it could very well be plastic surgery. I don't know. But they're also saying, because she remember she broke her leg really bad in the in the middle of a jungle somewhere doing some charity work or something. And they're saying it could be, she was on steroids or something for that injury. Ashley. Ashley. And that's why her face seems swollen. Well, then Ashley also dealt with uh, Harvey Weinstein and stuff. That, so exactly. she's just kind of been yeah. out of the acting world. And she was like a really promising, right. not promising. She was like in blockbuster movies and yeah. like opposite like Matthew McConaughey and stuff oh, like she that. Was huge. Like, yeah. She was a big star. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get into this. Um, this was a 48 hour mystery, which I watched. And this was pretty juicy. This girl, Suzanne Morphy. Unfortunately, she has gone missing. They have never found her body. Um, it was last year or two years ago. She went on a bike ride, or they think she went on a bike ride, yeah. the day before um, Mother's Day. The teenage girls were, like, at camp, and the husband was like, I don't know. You know, the daughters were like, I can't get a hold of mom. The dad was out of town. He's like, oh, my God, well, is her bike there? Have someone check the bike. Maybe she went on a bike ride. I don't know. This is so strange. So anyway, they eventually arrested the husband because they had so much evidence. They had evidence that, one, that she was unhappy and wanted to get divorced and he didn't want to get divorced. Two, she found her old high school sweetheart who was a married father of six who they were on WhatsApp, WhatsApp app or whatever. WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah. And like, you know, sexting and having phone sex and sending photos and also meeting in person. Oh. And also talked about marrying each other and running away. Then they found these darts um, that he would, like, kill deer and stuff. Okay. And so they think that maybe he was running after her around the house because his phone was going around and, like, shot the her husband. with a gun. Yeah. yeah. And then got disposed of her, disposed of the evidence because they showed his car, like, going to all these different places to throw away trash. And he goes, oh, I'm just cheap. I just don't want to go to, like, a landfill and have to pay. Yeah. So I go to different trash cans all over the city. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm with him on that. I do the same thing. <laughs> I have a couple of good ones. Then they found the bike. Or no, yeah. they found the helmet. I don't know if they ever found the bike. They found the bike helmet. And so they arrest him. And he's spending three months in, in prison awaiting the trial. But then the defense found that the prosecution had held back some very important evidence. Right. Which is they found other male DNA that doesn't match her boyfriend's or his in her car and on some uh, on, and on some other things. And that DNA is linked to a couple other female victims of sexual oh. assault. Oh, so it's not the guy. Well, from we don't WhatsApp. know, but they don't know where the body is. So anyway, they let the husband out of prison, and the prosecution said, "But without prejudice, which just means we could come back for They're you. They're coming back, but we we yeah. feel like we're very close to finding the body." Mm -hmm. And we need to find the body to see if the body matches, like, their theory. Like, he that tased her with a dart that he did for animals and probably shot her, too, and whatever. And, yeah. like, they need to find the body in order to have the case they need to say it was him. But I don't know how you'd explain the strange DNA. But I'm like, that is exactly like a Scott Peterson thing. Like, the marriage was not good, and then... Voila, your wife's missing. Could yeah. it be the greatest luck in the world mm -hmm. or the worst? Right, right. Like, anyway. So that they were going to rearrest the husband. Isn't it always eventually just the husband? Always. I mean, like the husband was pretty cute. Oh, that staircase. Yeah. What is the staircase? We look up the staircase. It's a scripted movie. That was the documentary, the documentary about the. English. Yeah, now yeah. there's a scripted movie about it. I don't know if it's HBO yeah. Max or Apple. Okay, that was John a good Bonnet's one. dad. Says he wants um, a separate, independent DNA um, people to go after whatever evidence they still have trying to find uh, what about John the Monet's. The scripted movie, The Staircase. Yeah. from 1998? No, no. Oh. They did make a... It's something, yeah, it's like... There might be a new one. Because there was a documentary a and then there was a... I think it was a scripted Just, thing too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when does it start airing? May 5th, 2020. Oh, oh, I was going tomorrow. crazy looking for it yeah. yesterday. May 5th, you guys, the staircase. Oh, this one's movie. good. This, nothing gets me hotter Damn. than a woman who works at a prison. Who runs off with the convict. Who runs off with a convict. Yeah, it's a good one. 
I wish there is a slight question is yeah. if she was taken against yeah. her will, but it does not look like it. No, at I think all. they're run they're because off. she was working at the prison mm-hmm. and she'd been there for 25 years. Real delight. Everyone liked her. And she said, Oh, I'm taking convict Joe Schmo over to a doctor's appointment. Kind of a seen. handsome convict. Have you seen him? Not as far a, as convicts go. Not terrible. Not terrible. Actually kind of a good nose. I noticed yeah. his nose was kind of like refined. <laughs> He's got a good look. And hot convict look. And so and so then she said, I'm gonna take him to this, you know, doctor's appointment or whatever. Yeah. And then uh and then after that I'm going to leave work early because I have my own doctor's appointment. Anyway, she never had a doctor's appointment for herself. Mm-hmm. They uh, they took off in the car. And they're they, still gone. They found the car, and the two of them are still gone. Yeah. And um, so the question is, did she take him on this thing, and he's she's you know being trapped by this person, and, and he is he is a violent criminal, right? But the murders that he did were like. In robberies. Yeah. Meaning yeah. like not like a serial killer rapist, mm-hmm. but not a good person, obviously. Right, right. Um, and so, or or what's the deal? But the fact that she said, I have this other thing later in the day, that's why I'm not going to be was, coming it, back. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely think she's in on it. But what always happens in these cases is you want it to end where they were – you know, on some romantic vacation or gambling in Vegas winning. But it never – they were always like they'll find him holed up in a trailer somewhere. You know, it never – Right, because the money like dies they can't out. Go, and they can't get anywhere. You know, now there's – Right, right. If people, if people are going to recognize them. Like if they cards. go to a bar and want to get – like he yeah. probably wants to get drunk at a bar. Right. She probably, or the, she probably wants to get a motorcycle and run in the back. Like that's probably the stuff they talked yeah, about, you know. right. But then someone's going to recognize them mm-hmm. at the little like saloon bar. Yeah. And tell on them. You always want it to be like Shawshank Redemption where they – he says, meet me at a beach in Mexico and then that's where they show up and they live out did their lives. Did they ever lives. meet at the end? They did. Well, yeah. He, Tim Robbins they, met Morgan Freeman. And they were lovers, right? No. Oh. How dare you? You just ruined Shawshank. <laughs> I know they weren't lovers but that – if that movie Maybe gets, they were. I don't that you know. Movie what? Gets, if that movie gets remade today, <laughs> oh, they were totally. Oh, they're yeah. full blown. They would walk down the beach and just instead of biracial, the, yeah. mm-hmm. hot, bisexual, hot. prison yeah. escape love right. affair. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's got to happen. It's not Morgan Freeman. Tyler Perry plays that role, <laughs> and the other role is played by uh, <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> hot. That's a hot couple. Um, let me see if there's any. Oh, Real Housewives of Atlanta was on, and I just wanted to say, the have you ever gone like to watch something like on your Dish Network or whatever your DVR, mm-hmm. and the photo that they choose from the series that's been on for like twelve years, they literally sh- choose a thumbnail from like season one. Oh no, I haven't noticed that. Is I that noticed that it. So yeah, so this girl, yeah. this is Kim Zolciak, literally from like 2008. She hasn't been on the show in seven years, and this is like with her old face and her old teeth and yeah. her like cheap. Synthetic wig. That's the co- wow. and she's not even on the show. The show is all black women, and the one photo that they show is the white girl that's not even on it anymore. Yeah, I just thought it was weird. Um, I saw a movie uh, this weekend that I really liked. It I think you might like. Um, think- very interesting. Kind of a funny idea for a movie. Tell me uh, the unbearable weight of of talent or something. Nicholas Cage plays himself in it. And he plays like what you believe Nicolas Cage to be, this crazy actor, and he can't get work oh, I anymore. I heard it was kind of funny. In Hollywood. Where do you watch it? I, I watched. I went to the movies in Michigan. Oh, you went to a real movie went theater? Went to a movie theater in Michigan, what Grand was it Rapids, like? Michigan. What was it like sitting in a movie theater chair? Well, first of all, it was one of these kickback leather chairs. Oh, it was a fancy press schmancy? Button, and it had heated seats. Heated. Press a button and we heat it up. Oh, heats up your butt hell crack. Oh my god, it was so How nice! How many people Big were in the movie theater? Popcorn. Quite a few. It was twenty, five, For an afternoon thirty. Film? Afternoon, one o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> now, did they have waitresses coming by and no, ordering? No, okay. maybe they did. I didn't. I don't I think they. Get, I think yeah. even when that that'll never come back. No, even I don't the, need that. Even the fancy ones are like that's just we don't even have the staff. Because for let that. me tell you what happens if you go to the, if you do the layback seat. And which I did, I went full layback, and I have my popcorn here. Like I don't, if I'm going to be reaching for chicken wings, it's a lot. It's a long length. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel rem- like okay. I remember <laughs> that I did this show with like Sam Rubin, 
okay. like eight years ago, and I would be on it. And the the payment was he'd give us the this gift card, like for yeah. the four of us to go to a movie at one of those fancy places, uh, and whatever you want, you could spend. Yeah, well, that's you do not want to tell that <laughs> to my family. I mean, yeah. cocktails, bottles of wine, apps. Full wow. blown entree, dessert, kids having stuff, full sodas, and you sat candy and watched bars, the movie. and we watched the movie. Oh my god! Then we were pressing the button for the waitress so <laughs> fucking much, and then all then the show ended. Like he wasn't doing it anymore, yeah. so I wasn't getting those free. And then we're like, God, do we really want to spend three hundred dollars to go see a movie? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. And then the waitress keep coming by, like, "Hi, yeah. can I get you anything?" Oh, well, I anyway, loved it though. Go check out this movie. It's really kind of a funny idea. He can't work. And he gets an offer for some guy who's a fan to hire him to come to his birthday party. And he goes. Let me th- let me see if there's any update on um, Black China. Hold on. Okay. Before we end the show. <gasps> oh, no. Steve Mango says, nothing yet. Jury had more questions. And oh, they're this still is, this at it. 2.5 hours so far this morning. I'm very curious what's going to happen since it's such a long deliberation. Three Explanation marks. Is this your and this is, is that twelve fifty nine on Monday? No, but his husband's a lawyer and he's just a hardcore juicy scooper. Who oh. cares? Well, he seems to know what he's talking about. Yes, he does. Yeah. Um. So and then after this, after this part is done with the Kardashians, yeah. Then I guess the next trial will be she is suing Rob Kardashian alone, yeah. for the revenge porn. Oh, in which well, that he posted in a fight these Instagram ex- yeah. uh, exchanges between he and Black China. But I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're, then they're going to wonder how much was she really hurt by that? How long was it up? What was the intention? Yeah, so, I don't know who she is. She, was she like one of now? Is she of the of the world? Remember, there was you mentioned her Tokyo before. Tony is her mom. <laughs> of course, Tokyo Tony's her mom. I, I you don't think I she know she was Tyga's. Girlfriend and baby mama. Tokyo and, Tony? No. Black, Black China. China. Listen, uh, yeah. Black China and Amber Rose That's were I, friends. But Amber they were strippers, Rose, right? Yes. And they were like video vixens went, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And they, they hit it off. And then Amber Rose was Kanye West, okay? Yes. And they never had kids got or anything. It, they break it, up. It. Black China starts dating Tyga. Tyga. Tyga and Black China went to Kanye's and Kim's wedding. Okay. Then Tyga and gets with gets with Kylie. Still, right? No, no. When she oh. turns eighteen, and Black China and their child are out. Oh, okay. So Black, the whole thing is like, was Jack, Black China pining, pining to get back? Got it. And because she and Kim were like friendly at a time. Yeah. Okay. Then they're dating, and Kylie's you know being stepmom to you know little um, King is his name mm-hmm. Tyga's baby, and. And then one day when uh, Rob is living at Chloe's house, Chloe's off doing some good American shoot or whatever. Somehow she slid into his DMs and then slid through the gates and slid up through the window and got in there with Rob. And all of a sudden Chloe comes home and is like, what? Like you guys are dating? She gets pregnant. Wow. They – they – Get a show. They fight, fight, fight. Awful, awful disaster. Yeah. He's like, okay, this is done. And okay. now China's like, because of your influence telling E not so to keep my show I going, I lost my Mac endorsements and this and that. And I could have done club appearances and everything. Yeah. And the other thing that she said, she's revealing so much. She's like, I'm so broke. I haven't paid my taxes in years. Yeah. Why are you <laughs> saying that, girl? <laughs> Shh. Yeah. And what's up, with Tokyo Tony? How's she doing? She's, Tokyo Tony, she got kicked the... out. She got kicked out yeah. of the courtroom. She can't be in there because she was threatening uh, the Kardashians and stuff um, on a uh, on an Instagram. But live. in the end, I mean, shouldn't this trial be like they, it was just a TV show that got canceled? They get, get canceled all the time. Well, that's that's why I think that uh, I don't. I mean, I'm kind of wondering. That would why... be like me suing Chelsea Handler, going, "Hey, listen, I could have made more money if you stuck around." Like that's. Ridiculous. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think that's why, in the end, I I predicted that she won't win any money from them. Right. But I'm, I don't think it's great that it's going on like day two and three. Yeah. Because being someone who knows about the law and stuff, it's. 
But you never know. There's not a guarantee. But when it's really quick, it's – well, you know, you just don't know in a civil trial. You just don't know. They might – they're probably fighting with each other. There's probably right. half of them are feeling – that in some way she was screwed over and the other half is like – and it's complicated. Like if you're not part of the industry, it's very hard to understand because it's not black and white. It's not yeah. like she worked at a factory that the Kardashians owned and then they they fired her from being an engineer at the factory. Yeah, Like it's a TV show and – Executives change their minds, and right. and if they're this volatile couple, could they not get the advertisers? I mean, there's a lot that I think to a normal jury, it might have been a little bit complicated to understand. So I think that's why they're asking so many questions. Yeah, well, but in the meantime, they all got to fly, and they all get to wear their outfits at the Met. Gala. But what now? Uh, going back to the Met Gala, Met Ball, whatever. What is the theme? There's always the theme. What is this year's theme? Can you look up the theme? I heard it was gilded glamour. Gilded glamour. Gilded and, glamour. And the gilded age. Which is is like uh, there's a show it's on supposed HBO. To, it's it? HBO and it's yeah. supposed to be like almost like the I think the night when is the Gilded Age? It's supposed to be like 1920s, so it's supposed to be 1920s. But Gilded Glamour, I kind of think it's just like you could sort yeah. of just do American Glamour. Which so if Kim is wearing the oh the Marilyn Monroe dress, it's kind yeah. of like the. It's oh. 1880. So if she chooses to wear the Marilyn Monroe dress, it's kind of like it's the t- it's the top of American glamour. Yeah, you know, which I always thought that was so shitty because like my mom told me that Kennedy was a cheater from right. the day I even was like, this is supposed to be this was a good president. My mom was like, mm, not really yeah. cheated on his wife. So, but I always thought that was so rude. Glamour is a American history spanning from 1870 to 1890. Okay. 1870, 1890. I don't know that how she can justify her yeah. Marilyn outfit, but we'll see. But I think that um, – I always thought that was just so rude that like she's the one singing to – to Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. when right. like Jackie's sitting there and they've yeah. been like screwing for a decade. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Different times, just different times. Different times. You know? Turn your head. Yeah. Chris – Everybody can go to Frangiola.fun. Frangiola.fun, yeah. Listen to Cover to Cover. I made a and mistake what? earlier when I said I'm going to be playing a winery in Massachusetts. It was it's, actually, wrong? it's actually in Pennsylvania. Okay. It's in Pennsylvania. It is the New Hope Winery in nice. New Hope, Pennsylvania. Then I go to the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, June 18th. Okay. The City Winery where you and I played. Now I'm going back there. Oh, in Philly. Okay. So many. Syracuse, Albany, Hartford, Connecticut. This is all this summer or what? Yeah, all this summer. Okay. Anchorage, Alaska, this weekend. I'm in Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska. How long Wasilla, is the flight to Alaska? I'm five going. and a half hours. Okay. Yeah. But right. I got a bunch of dates coming up, and I love having Juicy Scoopers come because they're course. the only ones who come anymore. They really do. In droves, they come. I love it. I love and it. They're so nice, and it's good to see them. Thank you all who came to the bowling alley. Amazing. They were nice. Chris, you're still. Number one. Thank you. For, I hope I get one more invite to the. You're yacht. still the one, the one I want to hold. My day. You're to. still the one. Oh, I thought you were singing the, the one other. That still the one that I belong to. You're singing to. a Shania Twain. Still the one. I was singing another. Okay, still let's the one. end it. Bye. <laughs>